Hey, just a quick warning before we get into this. This video does contain spoilers for the most recent episode of Ruby, so if you haven't seen that, then probably save it for later. Thanks. Hello, my name is Joe, and welcome to my channel. Now, over the past month or so since I started putting out these theory videos, I've made some theories that I'm pretty proud of. Also, some theories I'm less proud of, but, uh, that's besides the point. While I am proud of many of these theories, as new information comes to light, we need to look back at them and readjust to fit the canon established within the show. So, that's what I plan to do today. Look back on some of the theories we've covered here and update them to fit the more recent events of the latest Ruby episodes. I'll also be commenting on if aspects of these theories were confirmed either correct or incorrect. Now, we have quite a bit to get through, so let's go quick. Theory 1, regarding the relics, their spirits, and how they will be used. This was a two-parter, so lots of info here. Let's take it a step at a time by going through each of the relics. Lamp of Knowledge, no theory on the spirit, for obvious reasons, and the theory on the final question confirmed incorrect. I thought Emerald would ask the final question with what is Salem hiding from us, but instead Cinder used it to find out Ruby's plans. Sad times. Staff of Creation, theory on the spirit being based on the Blue Fairy. Kinda confirmed incorrect. Uh, Eddie implied on Twitter he's based on Merlin. Still, I think Blue Fairy is a better analog, since it'd mean the spirits are all kinda gender-swapped from their fairy tale counterparts, like Jin was, and because of the second part of this section, being that our theory that Penny would be turned into a real girl was confirmed correct. N not like I described it, but it's, it still happened, so yeah. <laughs> Sword of Destruction, theory on the spirit being based on Merlin, uh, probably out the window, for obvious reasons. This has made me think of a new theory regarding them, which I may make another video because we gotta get through these theories fast, uh, but my theory on who will use it has thus far been unaffected. Crown of Choice, really unaffected by anything that has happened recently. Alright, that took a bit of time, but let's get to the next one. Theory 2, Ruby and the Hound. And, uh, yeah, nothing has really affected this in total. Uh, but considering they mention pretty much exactly what I said in the actual show, I kind of doubt it's gonna happen, since a twist like that being acknowledged usually means it's actually something else, but who knows. <laughs> Theory 3, on the ultimate end of Ruby. Literally nothing has affected this. At all. Theory 4, Jean and the King of Vale. Again, nothing has really affected this, but I definitely need to make a revamped Relic Theory because of my final conclusion in that video, but I'll probably do that at another time. Theory 5, Ironwood's End. Yeah, just completely confirmed incorrect. Nothing happened like I said it would. Uh, this is really the first major L on the board, I think. Um, the other ones were incorrect. Uh, but weren't as horribly incorrect as this one was, I think. Theory 6, Junior's fourth member. Uh, again, nothing really confirmed correct or incorrect here, but I want to take this moment to talk about Penny. I am concerned. I don't want Penny to die again. And if Penny dies now, they can't bring her back because her core was destroyed. I am very concerned, because to me, it feels like Cinder is probably going to get most of the Maiden powers, and that would mean either Penny dying or getting them drained out like Amber, maybe her aura as well. I could conceivably see Pietro giving the rest of his aura in the aura transfer machine if hers is drained, since it has been mentioned a few times but never actually fully used, but I don't really know. Just... Just please don't kill Penny again. <laughs> I'd really prefer if you didn't. Theory 7. What the fall means for Ruby. So first off, we can confirm a few things for this one. We know that Emerald, Ren, and Oscar are guaranteed to not fall in with Ruby wherever they are going, 
they are locked in vacuo and won't be able to get back into Ambrosius's world. We also know that Penny isn't in the clear yet. I really thought she was since she had the relic, but I guess not. Now, I really don't know if she'll end up in vacuo, fall, be stuck in Atlas, or just die. So, yeah. <laughs> Jean and Nora seem to be the only major options for other members of the main cast to fall in with Ruby, but I'm not sure. I hope so, for multiple reasons. For one, I just don't want all of Junior to be written out for all of next volume. It was bad enough when they were written out for half of volume 6. It's gonna make me really sad if it happens again. Also, it would just really suck for Nora fans to start her getting development and then make her disappear for a whole volume. I do think there's a decent chance. This would be a good way for Nora to find herself without Ren on whatever adventure her and Ruby could go on. I could also see Jean going down with them since he is likely to get into the fray with Cinder next episode. However, I could also see this not happening. I could see him, like, grabbing Ruby as she is about to fall, and her telling him to let go and get out of there, since someone needs to tell the others what happened. Maybe even asking him to take Penny if she was knocked unconscious or something during the fight. I could see it either way, but I really don't want them to write Jean out for a whole volume. He's been so good, and I don't want him to be relegated to a book instead of the show. <laughs> and finally, the elephant in the room. Time travel. Still, probably not a good idea, but I found another idea that could maybe support it. So, they've referenced the girl who fell through the world a couple times in the last few episodes. Most people compared to Alice in Wonderland or Salem, but if one of our heroes fell through the world that Ambrosius created, and then return to Remnant at a different time, who's to say they couldn't become the inspiration for that fairy tale? Perhaps even if they travel through multiple time periods, the magical world they go to could even be the world before the gods left. I know it's still probably not a good idea, but it's kind of neat to think about, come on. <laughs> Anyway, that's all the theories I've got to go through today. What do you think? Agree? Disagree? Think that Ambrosius makes a better blue fairy parallel than a Merlin parallel? Let me know in the comments below. And, you know, subscribe. I'm trying to do a video every week or so, so you might find something you like. Till next time, safe journeys, my friends.